All right, everyone, welcome to the video. It's a bit of a random one today. I wanted to chat about the main topic <coughs> behind the clothing company and what on earth has been going on with finances and why you guys haven't heard from me in a while. Yeah, so, so the main reason as to why I haven't really done anything or updated you guys with the company is simply because there's been so much going on behind the scenes and it has been the longest journey for me to get any product or anything from the supplier and it's taken me a long time. I haven't had samples come in. I'm meant to have had samples months ago. Obviously this is not my normal content but I thought I'd just make a video to address this because lots of people have been asking me on the Instagrams. <laughs> yes, I know, calm down, calm down. Uh, about what's been going on and I haven't been able to really address it in Instagram stories because I haven't been at a point where I could really talk about it in copious amounts of detail and now I feel like I'm able to because I'm aware of what has been going on and I'm able to give you guys a little bit more of an insight as to sort of what actually has been happening behind the scenes. So let's start off with the products themselves. I ordered about nine different items um, in different colours and different sizes in four to five different sizes in five to six sorry, five to seven different colours and designs. So it's a lot of product coming in. The original order that I ordered was 750 items. I paid for samples, I paid for um, delivery charges to the UK, the VAT, all of that sort of thing is, is, is all sort of included as part of the price. Um, what else did I pay for? Obviously the fabric and the manufacturing, the the whole package as, it, as a customer would receive it, right? So you've got the branded labels, you've got the, the branded bags, you've got how, how, what are you doing? Pass me that. Just eating my lip balm. Um, there's so much that goes into making a product and I didn't really understand how long this company was gonna take. Uh, how did I find this company? They're a friend of mine who, uh, I say they were, I had a friend of a friend who basically had a manufacturer that I got in contact with and have been speaking to them since I ever started, since I started the, the brand probably about nine months ago. And I have, I'll put some photos on the screen of how the old design used to look. That was the original Muscle Man logo, as you can see. And I, it was very small scale. It was me starting out with a bunch of my friends. I invested all the money, obviously, into sort of getting the product and the brand set up. And I was using um, suppliers that had already manufactured a product, and then you just put your brand on that product, right? Um, it's not something that was particularly tapered around the person's body type, it was it was nothing that I could really control because it's a product that's already made and I was just putting my logo on that product. And it didn't really have much of a personal touch. So I I really, I watch people like Christian, obviously Christian Guzman, if you guys don't know, he runs Alpha Elite, little video there of what he's all about. And as you can see, like his product, he goes into a lot of detail, he explains sort of the style and approach and why he uses certain fabrics and he gives people a bit of an insight into the company. And not only did I want to create this sort of content on my channel because I see him as a big inspiration. That's where a lot, of, a lot of the idea came from. When I was younger, I actually started another clothing brand. I say clothing brand, I was selling shirts as a kid for my parkour company, right? And parkour was jumping off buildings and stuff like that, if you guys didn't know. Um, and I had a, a company when I was really young and I used to put the, the brand on shirts and then sell those shirts to people. And that was sort of what got me into fashion in that sense. I really wanted to produce a piece of clothing that people wanted to wear. And I didn't think that it was just about putting a logo on a shirt as much as that was where I was at when I was a younger age. I think the, the more I've learned as I've got older and the more I watch people online like Max Tuney and Christian and all these guys that I watch on YouTube, all these people that I aspire to be like, you know, you don't realize the amount of effort that really goes into it. You only ever see the finished product and you think, why am I paying, you know, 40 pounds for a hoodie or 50 pounds for a hoodie or whatever it might be or 20 pounds for a shirt, or whatever, you know, like, you don't really think about the processes and it's like, from my background of being a chef for the last 10 years or whatever, right? I've been in the catering industry for a long time and, and I understand how it is when you're a chef and you're trying to produce a menu and you're trying to price it and it's, it's costed accordingly, you know, it might cost you six pounds or seven pounds something to make a steak dinner, for example, and you might charge 25, 30, maybe even more, depending on the cut, right? And the margins are very small and the main money is made in alcohol sales in a restaurant, right? That's, the, that's what a lot of people know. <laughs> And that's and that's that's it. So a lot of it, a lot of it is the sort of behind the scenes of understanding where the fine line of, of like buying something at a price and then how much to charge it up for. Try trying to find that middle line between what you can charge and, and what is a reasonable rate to charge to the customer without it being not worth your time, right? Because so, we're all in business to make money at the end of the day. We're, we're all in business to, to benefit the customer as well. You're providing a service, you're providing a product, whatever it might be. There's so much that goes into it and there's no reason why you can't be real and transparent with people. And I think that's what I'm trying to do with the whole 
brand itself. That's just a little bit about the background as to what I was trying to do with the company and I think it's, it's I didn't really realize the stresses um, that were gonna, well, that I was taking on when I first established the brand. And I think the way, I've, the way I've first sort of set everything up was to get the brand out there, was to get people to support on what I stand for and to have um, a company where I didn't really know where I was going. I didn't really have a, a vision, so to speak, in terms of where I wanted to be. And I decided to halfway through to chop and change my ideas and eventually I came up with something that I'm happy with, which is where it is now, which is a fitness lifestyle brand. And there's so much that goes into this and I'm only ever at the beginning, very, very, very beginning even of producing product that I think people want to buy um, at a reasonable price and very high quality and that sort of thing. And, and if I get a product through that I'm not happy with, I don't really want to sell it to people. Right now I've got some items left that I don't really want to sell because I'm not really happy with the quality of the product. I've got some sizing of products that people don't necessarily want to buy because they might be sized incorrectly. You know, for example, the fit around the chest on the long sleeve that I produced was a little bit too tight fitting so I can't sell certain sizes because they don't work out right. And that was a problem with the manufacturers and they're not willing to take on the responsibility and even though it's my measurements and all this sort of thing. So there's a, a whole multitude of factors that have gone into sort of creating my own product. And I would just warn you guys that it, it sounds like such an exciting and fun venture for a young person to take on. I mean, I'm 24 now and it's not, and, and there's loads of people that I know that have, everyone has a fitness brand, everyone has like a clothing company, everyone has like a, a clothing brand of some kind or is working on something in fashion because it's very easy to do. It's easy to find a product online you like, to buy it for a certain price and to put your logo on it and then sell it on, you know, to upcharge the price and sell it on to people. And I see why people do that because it's, the barrier to entry for that is so low. It's like personal training, you know? Anyone can become a PT just like anyone can create a fitness brand. So it's one of those things and I think if you're a young person that has, you know, for example, 2,000 pounds or even even 500 pounds, you can buy 20, 30, 40, 50 shirts or whatever for a certain amount and then sell them on and make a profit. At the end of the day, that's how I started when I was younger. But don't get me wrong, that's a massive risk. And do you want a get rich quick scheme or do you want a business that's actually going to thrive and succeed? And, and I'm not talking to you in this video like I'm some sort of success. I'm really not. I'm just trying to give you an idea that it's it's actually, I'm, I'm also sort of partially dissuading you from from getting into an industry where you think that it might be easy to make money because it is not easy to thrive in an industry that is saturated. Um, and we're talking about clothing as well as the fitness industry as in general, but I'm, I'm, this video is in particular talking about clothing, um, but they are very similar in, in some aspects. But I just want you guys to understand that, that there's so much effort that's gone into this brand and I've put a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of effort into establishing something that really isn't even really established. And it takes, a lot to get kicked down many times and to get back up and you need to feel confident in what you're doing and if you're going into business to make money then you're probably not going to thrive as well as you hope you would um, and I think that part of the battle is understanding that it's producing a product that your customers want and how it's going to benefit them without taking the piss out of your customers and finding that right um, I guess and finding the right gap between how much you can charge a customer that's fair to charge a customer how much profit is okay to make without it being you know, unjust, for example, um, and also producing value to that, to that customer because at the end of the day, every customer purchases with their emotion and I'm trying to connect an emotional tag to this brand so that people can see the development of the company and, and, and aren't just buying from a mass brand. You know, We're not just buying from Nike, an 80 pound jumper, for example, and not caring about where it's made from or whatever it is, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's so much that goes into it. We just buy it because it's in it's in fashion. It's bra it's a brand that everyone loves and thinks is a cool brand. So we spend our money on it, you know. And I think um, I'm trying to produce something a little bit more. And I, I look at people like Christian and Max and these guys that've got brands, and they're all establishing a good relationship with their customers and the people that support them and the people that buy in their product. And that is very much what I'm trying to do. Also, is to replicate this idea of you know, building a brand around my personality as an individual, reaching out to you guys online, giving you something back, because it's not just about me putting my logo on a shirt and selling it to you guys and making a profit. As much as some people will look at it like that, you know, there's so much that goes into what I'm trying to do with the company. And, and this is me documenting. Um, this is not me trying to give copious amounts of advice to people. It's just me documenting the process because I'll look back at this video in a year and I'll be like, look at where I've come from. I mean, I'll either be more of a success or I'll either, it would have stopped what I'm doing with work clothing and have just dropped it by this point. And I think it would have been, it'll be beneficial for me to look back at this content and I'm sure it'll be educational and interesting for you guys to see the process that I go through um, in the day to day of trying to, trying to sort of operate something on my own. My honest opinion is that if you have a, have a passion and you really believe in what you want to do, 
at the end of the day there's no reason why it can't work so i'm not trying to say don't do it because it's not going to work um what i am trying to say is just be aware um be aware of what it is that you have a clear vision for what you want to do and understand that maybe it might not work um are you in a position to be able to risk that and i think when you're young why not when you're a bit older and you have a lot more commitments you know you might have a family you might have a house to pay for all of this other stuff if you've got if you if you can't even manage a lifestyle as of current then how on earth are you going to manage a lifestyle around taking other projects on and i think that's a battle that people don't really think about they just get so excited about doing an idea being impulsive which is something that i can be and um and taking a lot on all at one time and that's something that i have done in my life previously and i'm talking about this now from you know from a legit standpoint that there's so much that goes into it so don't just dive in head first think about it but also don't think about it for too long there's a very fine line but if you guys have ever got any questions feel free to dm me on instagram um i'll go into detail later on in other videos on the channel if you guys want to learn more about what's going on then i'm happy to talk about it it's not a problem at all um i'm just trying to learn as much as i can along the way so i hope you guys appreciate the content bit of a random one i know i have to shave i look like a homeless man it's been quite a stressful time um over these last few days um for me emotionally but it's all good guys i hope you appreciate the content um if you're new be sure to subscribe i've had a, the channel's been growing so massive shout out i'll pop a new subscriber on the screen thank you very much guys for subscribing to the channel and checking out for another video you're amazing appreciate support i'll see you in the next one